Hey everyone, I'm going to start making a lot of short videos about programming basics and um, basically like the process of getting into making your own games. So hopefully you like it and I'll try and keep them short. So now let me get out of your way and we can begin. Alright, so now that I'm out of your way, let's start with uh, some simple stuff. I'm using Unity 3D. So Unity is a great uh, program you can use. It's a game engine. This is probably what most screens would look like if you were starting out. You'd be in the scene view. Um, what I've done is I've just dragged the game view over to the side. I want to make it a separate window. And then now I can kind of see the scene and the game both at the same time. That's irrelevant because right now we're just working on scripting. So I've got a script on this game object and I'm going to show you a couple of things you can do with that. So uh, let's start with the basics right here. This part of the script is the name of the file. It's really important that it matches up identically. They have to be the same caps and everything. Uh, this part of the script and these two areas are where you're going to start uh, loading up your code and you know calling out all of the things that you want your program to do. Um, right above here in between, see where start is and where that mono behavior part is? That's where you can load all of your variables. You want to create variables. Variables are the information the computer uses. So if you wanted a number, for example, you would use a number type variable like float. A float is a number that can hold a decimal. So let's go ahead and create one. Public float my number. Right here, this is the name of the variable. And then end most lines, almost every line, with a semicolon because that's just the syntax for computers. So public right here it is a classifier that tells um, the computer that this script is accessible not only right here in this own script but in other scripts as well. Float tells it the type of variable and then this is the name of the variable. So that if I wanted to set a value for that variable I can either do it up here I could say 5.4 F for float or if I didn't want to initialize it right there, I could uh, set that in the start. Start will be called one time at the beginning, right when the object is loaded. Update will be called once per frame, where a frame is every time your screen updates its images. So let's go to start, and I'm going to say my number. Notice how it starts to autocomplete. If I just hit enter, since it's selected, it will complete it for me. Equals, and I can give it a value. 3.2f or whatever I feel like it should be. So then I'm going to save this file. I, I typically will click save all. It has less uh, errors in Visual Studio. I'm going to go back to Unity and you should notice the script will update in a second and it includes a variable I've just created, my number. If you type your variables with the format Unity suggests where every time you start a new word you create a capital letter, then when you go back into the Unity editor it will separate your words um, into two readable words. It says my number is zero right now because I declared its value in the start function. But if I was to hit play, it would immediately go to 3.2. Because it's public, I can still change it, make that 5.3, 6.1, 0.9. I can hit enter, that number will change. If I was to create another variable, public float um, what time is it then I could assign the value for that variable as well so what time is it notice how it auto completes is 7.15 so obviously that's not a time but 7.15, 7.15 you can see where I'm going with this Go back, uh, save it, go into Unity, you'll notice the next variable pops up right here. So those are your numbers. Uh, how about a set of letters? That's called a string. A string is what you can do to create any kind of um, text. So I'm going to make this string name. Let's just make a name. Oh, it doesn't like name. My name. So then I can say my name is Mr. Aladros. String must have the value in quotation marks. 
and you can type pretty much whatever you want. It'll accept it. Just put it in quotation marks. If I wanted to have a variable that was a game object, that one's not really a basic variable, that one's Unity specific, but you could do it. I can call this cube, and then I can say this cube equals game object. Game object refers to the game object that the script is attached to. So in Unity, I've attached a script to this cube. So let's hit play. And you'll notice when I click on this cube, guess what? It highlights this cube. I've got my string. What time is it? My number. All right. Let's go into the next type of variable. So far we have float, string, game object. This one's a really big one for Unity. Vector 3. A vector 3 is um, something you can use to control things like position. Vector 3 is basically a combination of three floats, x, y, and z. So I can say position equals new vector 3. I'm auto completed by hitting enter. Now I need to give it three values separated by commas. If they are decimals, make sure you include the f after it, just like we did up here. By the way, to highlight a word, just double click and it'll highlight the whole thing. So I'm going to set the position to 3, 2, 1. And what I want to do is I want to say game object dot position, oh sorry, transform dot position equals position. So I'm going to take this value that I've just set and I'm going to set it right over here. And we'll see what happens. So we'll wait for it to update. Hit play. And check it out. Our cube has moved. So we'll do that one more time just so you can see it right over here. Cube has moved. It's now at 3, 2, 1. If I click on the cube, cube, 3, 2, 1. So that's an intro to some of the variables in Unity. And hope this video helped.